Greetings, everyone. I am a Binti Canoe. I am glad to see, I'm glad to see you all came out and made it here safely. Before we continue, please join me in a prayer. Okay, let us bow our head. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. We thank you for everything that you have done for us, for the city, for the citizen. Lord, we ask that you continue to cover us with the blood of Jesus, Father God. Lord, we ask that you give us the strength and the guidance that we need to continue into the into this life and journey that we're going through. Lord, I ask that you please protect every business owner, every citizen, especially those that was affected during this pandemic, Lord. I ask that you open the doors for us, Father God. Lord, I ask that you please chill us and heal us and touch us, Father God. Lord, I ask that you continue to protect the city um, and you protect all the councils and let each and every one of them be able to represent us in the way that you want th you want them to be represented. Lord, we just thank you. We give you the honors and we give you the praise. And Father God, in Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. amen. Um, so thank you again. Again, I am a Binti Canoe. I am honored to be here today to introduce a phenomenal, strong, wise woman. She is strongly committed, she is strongly committed to her city and her citizens. This special person goes above and beyond to provide the support and assistance her people need. I would like to applaud and congratulations Councilwoman Ms. Sabrina Woolton for everything she does as a whole, especially pushing the Citizen Review Investigation Task Force. Thank you for being bold and courageous. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce my boss, my mentor, my advisor, Councilwoman Sabrina Woolton. Let's give her a round of applause. very much. That's very kind of you to say. And thank you all for being here today. I uh, greatly appreciate your attendance. Uh, this is a very special time for our city. It's a very special uh, program as well. Uh, I believe the very first time that we had a disparity forum was back in February 2019. Uh, since I came on to council in 2018, it was my priority to make sure we took the disparity study recommendations and made them a priority. And I'm pleased to say that city council a staff has worked with me uh, and the council tirelessly to make this a priority. Uh, the funding for the disparity study and the recommendations were placed in our budget last year as a priority, which I had never seen before. And so I just want to make sure that uh, everyone knows and uh, the community, residents, business owners know that we are uh, serious about implementing all of the recommendations from the disparity study. Uh, we've come a long way. Uh, we do have a ways to go. We know that we're not there yet but we sure are not where we used to be. And so I just wanna commend everyone uh, for their support and just your patience in working with us and uh, along to make sure these recommendations are implemented. And so where you sit right now in the hive is really important because the hive is a tangible recommendation that was uh, brought forth in the disparity study recommendations. The recommendation stated that there will be a separate uh, office for small women, minority and service disabled veteran owned businesses so that they could be enriched in the certification for SWAM businesses and also that data will be monitored for those businesses and contracting and contract dollars. So this center that we sit in is a part of the recommendations of the disparity study. And that's huge uh, because without the work and the support of staff and the community and uh, our champions for the disparity study, we wouldn't be here today. And so what better place Will we start this forum will be here uh, in 2021. And so as we move forward, I'd just like to talk about where we've come from. Uh, in 20, 
18, 2017, uh, some of the numbers that we had regarding minority businesses and women businesses um, were very low, as, as well as service disabled businesses were very low. And so uh, with implementing many of the recommendations, which uh, was started February 2019, uh, there was a resolution that I submitted that was also supported by Council Member Aaron Rouse. That piece of legislation uh, implemented all of the recommendations for the disparity study, and Council unanimously approved the recommendations for the disparity study. And so tonight, you will hear uh, where the, the, the data, where the percentages are for women, for the small businesses, for uh, service disabled veteran owned businesses. And without further ado, I would like to bring up uh, the, uh, one of the individuals who will talk about uh, the data, which is Lavera Tol Tolentino, who is our minority business coordinator. But before I do that, I'd like to really give a special thank you to the community because as I was coming in, uh, I was talking to Chief Severa and he reminded me about the march and marches that took place for the disparity study. I remember one that I was involved in but even prior to that, uh, the citizens got together and they went down to the oceanfront and they marched together to make sure that this disparity study would happen, first of all. Uh, and I can't tell you, you know, how wonderful it is to see some of these things come into fruition. I'd also like to thank the Virginia Beach Interdenominational uh, Ministers Conference for their work and their continued advocacy to see this uh, study and recommendations through. I'd like to thank Bruce Smith, who was very instrumental and invested funds into this study. I'd also like to thank the Human Rights Commission uh, and Sylvia Strickland, a commissioner of the Human Rights Commission, who uh, with members of the commission fought very hard to see this happen, as well as many countless unsung heroes who came way before I did and other members of council to make sure that uh, we were paying attention as a council and city leadership uh, recognize the disparity between contracts and women businesses and minority owned businesses and service disabled business owners. And so here we sit and stand today. Uh, this indeed is a piece of history and it's something that Virginia Beach uh, can be hopeful for in the future as we move forward in implementing the recommendations and continuing on this path, I believe we will have great success. In disparities in contracting, there is associated with it a negative connotation. Of course, when you look at terms of dollars and cents, there's a grave uh, negative connotation in losing funds when there is a disparity. However, when that disparity is addressed, and everyone has an opportunity uh, to contract and do business in the city of Virginia Beach. That's how we will continue to grow and prosper and move ahead in the next generations. And so without further ado, I will ask Ms. Tolentino to come up and she's gonna go over some of the projections um, for, or the projections and the data for 2021. Uh, one of the other things I'll say as she's coming up is this form is vitally important because it opens up the conversation uh, about the disparity study and the progress to the public at large. And so these forms provide you with an opportunity to engage, to provide feedback, and to address your questions. 
And so this is why I also hold the forums because it invites the public in. It uh, restores transparency and accountability to the city as well. And so Ms. Mrs. Tolentino, please come up. Good evening and thank you council member Wooten. Um, uh, we really appreciate your commitment and your support to small women and minority owned businesses as well as those businesses that are service disabled veteran owned businesses. I had the pleasure of presenting this uh, report to city council on Tuesday evening um, and um, as council member Wooten stated we've come a long way but we still have a lot of work to do. And so with that, I will go ahead and get into the report. I, I, I thank Mayor Dyer, I thank City Council, I thank um, my supervisors, my managers, uh, Ms. Letitia Shelton in the back, she's our finance director, can you wave your hand? For her support and commitment, Rebecca Key, uh, our purchasing agent who helps us get these ordinances passed to make sure we're following um, the Virginia Public Procurement Act, she's back here, so I thank you. And then our whole SWAM team, we have Aisha Van Dessen here in the front, and Keith Lee, and Nikita Susans. I think she, oh, she's in the back. So I thank them all. And then, um, you know, from economic development, we always have the support of um, the, the, uh, the Economic Development Office, and that's Jeff Smith, um, who helped get this wonderful establishment up, the building. So. Um, the, in FY20, this, these are the numbers that I will report today. In FY20, we, um, we had awards and expenditures to minority women and service disabled veteran owned businesses. Let's see. So the first slide, we'll talk about the overall spend and award data. So total awards, Total city awards were $245 million. And of that $245 million, $14.9 million went to minority-owned businesses. $25.5 million went to woman-owned businesses for a total of $40.5 million. And if you look at the total spend, total spend for city contracting uh, dollars was $372.9 million. And of that, 24.5 went to minority-owned businesses, 27 million went to woman-owned businesses, for a total to minority and woman-owned businesses at $51.5 million. And then um, we have some graphs down here, which you'll be able to see a little better uh, towards the end, because we also have it graphed out by percentages at the bottom here. And I'll go over those at the next slide. Um, I do want to point out that our award and spend amounts for FY20 um, does not contain subcontracting data. So as we look more into the award and spend amounts by contract type, when we talk about contract type, we're talking here goods and services, uh, professional services, architectural and engineering services, and construction. So when we break it down, even when we look at the total awards, uh, just remember that the, that total award amount was that $245 million. When we look at that amount uh, of the awards, 14.9 um, 14 million again went to minority owned businesses. And in the goods and services area, that's 1.9 million. Professional services, 5.3 million. And A&E services, 923,000. And construction, 600, I mean, $6.6 .6 million. And you might ask yourself um, exactly what type of contracts those were. So when we look at minority-owned businesses, those type of contracts and goods and services stemmed from office supplies, industrial supplies, and janitorial services was the bulk of the funds awarded. And then when we look at the, uh, the uh, professional services line here, this $5.3 million in awards, uh, we're looking at software, we're looking at technology, we're looking at medical staffing and pharmaceutical services. And then when we look at construction, um, we have a job order contract um, contract that we do. That is the bulk of that with the street sweeping. And then there's general construction of different projects that we have throughout the city. And then when we look at A&E, of course, those are um, design services and 6.3, uh, I mean, 923,000 went to A&E services in the minority businesses. When we look at the spin, again, we look at goods and services, professional services, A&E, and construction. 
And uh, the spend is definitely related to the same thing. You have your spend in, in office supplies and you have your spend in industrial supplies and janitorial services where it relates to goods and services. Uh, the spend amount, total amount again, was $24.5 million to minority owned businesses. Um, we look at the same thing and we compare that to uh, woman owned businesses. We look at those award dollars. Again, that was $25.5 million to woman owned businesses. And then when we look at goods and services, you see the $9.6 million. Um, and then professional service, $452,000. Uh, A&E, $7.5 million, and in construction, $7.8 million. And then we look at the spend in goods and services, $11.5 million, $712,000 in professional service, $3 million in A&E, and then $11.7 in um, construction. And again, those contracts for woman-owned businesses um, are in the area of goods and services. We had fire safety and security, uh, fire safety and security and supplies in the public safety arena. And then we also have recycling, furniture, and public safety equipment. When we look at professional services, right here, the 712,000, we're looking at advertising and media for women-owned businesses. And then, of course, A and E are those design um, design projects. And then in construction, um, the bulk of that is in the area of an electrical services, um, annual services contract we have, and then also HVAC and general construction. And again, you can see the totals here on the side. And then as I stated earlier, when you look at those, um, when we look at those totals and we put them in the form of percentages, of, of those award dollars, again, the award dollars being $245 million in competable dollars for the city. Um, Minority-owned businesses uh, were awarded 6.1 percent, um, and the spend amounted to 6.6 percent. And as you can see, we broke down the percentages in each of those contract types as well. And then when we come to woman-owned businesses, we can see the award, um, the award percentages here, uh, total percentages of 10.4 of in awards and total percentage of 7.3 in spend. And again, a breakdown of where the cat, how those uh, related to the contract types. So with a total of um, minority and woman owned business awards was 16.5%. And then in spend with women and minority owned businesses, we were at 13.9%. And again, the spend dollars was the $372 million. Um, we even go further, we break it down by race um, and gender. And so this slide will show, give you an idea of where we fell, where related to businesses owned by black Americans, Hispanic Americans, Native Americans, Asian Americans, and then other minority category, and then non-Hispanic white women. And again, that total was $40.5 million, but we break it down to uh, ethnicity or race, and then the gender here. And as you can see, um, black American-owned businesses received 8.2% um, or $3.3 million. Hispanic Americans received 3.3% 3, 3, 3 or $1.3 million. Um, Native American, we didn't have any businesses registered as Native Americans. And then Asian Americans received 6.9 million or 17.3%. And then other minority, 3.2% million or 8.1 percent and non-hispanic white women 25.5 million or 63.1 percent and that was the award so now we broke it down to the the spin um, spin so we actually paid these dollar amounts here to black american owned businesses hispanic american owned businesses and Native American-owned businesses, Asian American-owned businesses, and other minority businesses. And as you can see, the percentages are here. Black American-owned businesses uh, received 12% or 6.1 million. Um, Hispanic American-owned businesses received 1.5 million or 3.1%. And then Asian American-owned businesses received 10.5 million or 20.5%. And then other minority um, category received 6.1 million or 11.9% and non-Hispanic white women, 27 million, or 52.5%. Uh, and then again, you have your total here of $51.5 million. And this is the spend, the actual payments that we made through competable contracts or solicitations within the city. 
Um, here we have a chart that provides a two-year look um, comparison. Um, and uh, we did award information here, this line right here, and then this is the actual payments or the spend data. Um, looking at the two-year spend for a fiscal year 2019 through fiscal year 2020, um, with the, in relation to awards, we were at 11.6% in 2019, and now we're at 16.5% in 2020. Um, and that's for awards. And then related to the payments or what we call spend, uh, we were at 9.5 in 2019, and now we're at 13.9%. And again, the, to the dollar totals are here for the award dollars by year and the spend dollars by year. So our service-disabled veteran-owned businesses, we give them a... a This, this, this slide right here. Yeah. Um, no, but I think when we go to the SWAM dashboard, you'll be able to see that. I'll show that, and if let me know if that if that is what you you're looking for. Um, service disabled veteran owned businesses. Um, a lot of service disabled veteran owned businesses are either owned by um, you know a, f a female business owner or a small business owner or a minority business owner. So we kind of we put their sep this one separate since because we don't want to duplicate the dollar amounts in there um, because they're already in the one slide. So when we break it down and we look at just those service disabled veteran or veteran owned businesses, our awards um, and we break it down to the contract type. Um, awards 341,000 um, in goods and services, and professional services 542,000, and A&E services $2,000, construction $490,000. For a total spend, uh, a total award um, to services able and um, veteran-owned businesses of $1.3 million, or 0.6 percent. Um, payments, as it relates to the payments or spend data. Uh, we, we spent 661000 in goods and services, 631000 in professional services, uh, A&E services, again, the $2,000, and then construction, $17,000 for a total spend of $1.3 million or 0.4% with services able uh, veteran and veteran-owned businesses. So um, one thing I do, okay, that's the end of the slides there, but um, through Councilwoman Wooten, she had asked the staff to create what's called a SWAM dashboard. And so working with our IT department, we created a SWAM dashboard um, at her recommendation. And so you will see that SWAM dashboard here. And um, within that SWAM dashboard, we have the years we have the disparity study recommendations from the 2018 disparity study. And all the re recommendations are here on the side. And then um, with that, we also have given a breakdown of the different, um, the contract uh, award amounts as well as the spend amounts by fiscal year. Uh, this particular one is FY 2020. Again, that total expenditure amount of $372 million. Uh, this is for woman-owned businesses at $27 million, and then with the uh, percentage of 7.3. And then we go here, and this is our service-disabled veteran or veteran-owned businesses, and it kind of graphs it out for you, the same data that we just went over. And then this is minority-owned businesses at 6.6% .6 or $24.5 million. And that data is also available for FY19. Uh, FY18 and FY17. And again, it, it provides that same data here broken out um, in, in a report, uh, report kind of contract, I mean, um, report kind of format where you can see the actual numbers here. And this information is available, the report as well as the SWAM dashboard. They are both available on our um, SWAM business office website through vbgov.com. And I know I will mess it up when I try to go there, so let me see. You can go to vbgov.com, you can put in um, backslash SWAM business office, and you can find 
Um, you can actually find the disparity study here as well as the SWAM dashboard and, and the report that we just went over as well. So at this time, um, would you like to open it up for questions? questions um, if you will wait if everyone if you have a question first off thank you uh, mrs. Tolentino for the report um, as we move into the question and answer session uh, please make sure that you have a microphone before you ask a question and so uh, we will do our best to answer these questions I might need you um, to to kind of come up here I would rather we sit here, but I don't think we can, the, we have the microphone capability to sit here and answer those questions. So we'll, I guess we can kind of stand here. So we'll just do that. Okay, okay, okay. All right. We'll take the first question. Uh, thank you for your presentation, Councilman Wooden. Thank you for your leadership on this issue. Uh, just a couple of questions. Um, on the dashboard, I'm glad you have it, but most dashboards I have seen uh, tend to give you an indicator as to whether or not you're green, red, or yellow. Whether you're like, you're good if you're green, you're red if you're bad, if you're not hitting the numbers, you're yellow if you're kind of, you know, close to uh, either one of those. And so I'm just trying to understand the dashboard. Is it really comparing the data to exactly what the recommendations of the study were? because the study said that there were significant disparities in certain areas. Does the dashboard say where we are with regard to those particular areas where there were significant disparities? And, and, and does it show it? Again, I, my history with dashboards is if it's red, it's bad. If it's yellow, you're improving. If it's green, you're good and you're making progress. So that's what I'm trying to get. When I look at the dash, but I don't really, that doesn't jump out at me. So, that was so that's, a, question. that's a good question, because right here at the bottom, and I failed to, to mention this, the aspirational goals for the fiscal years are down here at the bottom. So in, um, in 2020, um, we did not have an aspirational goal for women-owned businesses yet, because that was just approved in, uh, for FY21, which is the reporting period uh, that we have to, to present the next time. So uh, the disparity study did show a significant disparity with woman-owned businesses, minority-owned businesses, and service-disabled veteran-owned businesses. And they recommended that the city uh, have an aspirational goal for woman-owned businesses at 13.3% and for minority-owned businesses at 12% and then service-disabled veteran-owned businesses was 11.9. So when we do the FY21 data, those, sh those goals will show here. The reason why we have the minority owned business um, um, aspirational goal here is because that was approved before FY21. And I guess all I'm saying is if the disparity study made those recommendations and the dashboard is comparing you to mm -hmm. how well you're mm -hmm. moving toward those recommendations, regardless of whether the council is active, why don't we just simply have the dashboard show how we're faring with those recommendations? We could do that. We could look into doing that. Um, but the in percentage. This case, just to be clear, if I look at minority owned businesses, I, I'm, I'm getting a little old. I turned 62 this month. So, uh, but I think minority is at 60. It's at 6.6. .6, and the aspirational goal is 12%. Right, so we're, we're flunking. Am I right? I haven't done a scale. Just, just I, I would have to do a so scale to see what a flunking blue. is. That should be a blinking like red thing. That's all I'm saying. I'll see if our technology can handle that, yeah. but a good point. Right. Mm -hmm. So that, that was my first question. My second question was. Excuse me, can you make sure? Yes, uh, another phone? question. Yeah, my second and last question. Um, is it possible for you to, to kind of break out in, in more, well, I mean, I think you've done it, but oftentimes when we lump everything together, it gets lost. And I'm talking particularly about women-owned businesses. That's why I asked you about that particular slide. Did you have it, those growth rates, 
mm -hmm. without women-owned businesses in there? Because we know the game that's played. The game that's played is that women -owned, white women-owned businesses skew these numbers. And so what I'm trying to get at is do you show year-over-year -year improvement without those numbers to see if we've really made progress with regard to minority-owned businesses? Um, we, in the past, we have, and that's something we can look at doing um, in the future. So I will say that uh, when we look at our woman-owned businesses, a lot of times um, we do say SWAM certified, and that's SWAM certified by the Commonwealth of Virginia. Um, and they do a, a, a wonderful job at that SWAM certification piece and making sure that if a business is owned by a woman, um, a non-Hispanic white woman, then they make sure they go through that interview process with them. Um, and so it's a very detailed and refined process. But we can look at doing that so that you just want to be able to see the growth of minority-owned businesses and then the growth of um, women-owned businesses. Absolutely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you for the follow-up with the uh, uh, disparity study. But I have a question about the category of other. And I, me I remember asking that same question at one of our uh, Minority Business Council meetings. That other, that's very close, the numbers are very close to the, uh, the minority numbers. What, what, who are, who is other? Can we actually define who other is? Can we say who they are? Well. Because their numbers are very close to the minority numbers. And I brought that question up before, but nobody mm -hmm. could really give me a solid answer. Um, I do remember you asking that question before, and other minority would be those that are multicultural that don't really identify as either being black American or Hispanic American or Asian American. They might be of mixed race, and that's that other minority. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm just using a hypothetical situation. Uh, my business partner is half white and half black he could fall under that other category. He could fall under that other category if he owns 51% of, of the business. The company. So they would have to own 51% of the business to be considered other minority. Okay, so, and I, just one more question. Okay, so that category right there, that other, is it when, when, you, when you submit your proposals and things like that and you put other on it, are we really taking a look at who other is or is it just, is that, it, it 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 kind of appears to me like a code. It, it just appears like a code. I'm not saying it is, but I'm just saying it kind of appears to me as a way certain people can slip through the cracks. That and I, when I say certain people, I'm talking about big businesses with uh, using a minority set aside to slip through the cracks because those numbers are 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 v almost matching the uh, the Black American numbers. Uh, or if I can't, I'm like, I'm like Gary, I'm losing my eyesight. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you look at other, uh, you know, they're very similar, very close. They're, they're very close. And that, to me, that's, a, in, in my opinion, it, it's somewhat of a red flag. And I think it needs to be talked about a little bit more in detail. So I just, that's I, just my opinion. Go ahead. I just want to, before you, you answer that, it, let me just make sure I understand. When we look at that other category, do we track that, or does the city track that by asking the other or the business to identify who they are? Is that how we do it? Say for instance, they I don't know if they fill out a document or any mm -hmm. information and they have to state what they are mm -hmm. and they check other. Mm -hmm. Is that how we kind right. of derive right. so that's how we derive that data we get it from them if they if they decide to check the other box we don't have any control over that that's what they decided to identify as well in all fairness in all fairness Gary and I starts a business we can and we've submitted a proposal we can actually check other you, you could check other however again we a lot of our businesses are SWAM certified by the state and they go through a process. So if you go in front of the state and they identify you as other or not under, in one of these categories, then that's what, that's what you would be considered as, as other. Um, and again, they do go through that interview process. Um, I do know they do ask for specific information. Um, so me being 
a black woman, if I go get a certified my business and I take my birth certificate, I'm not going to sit in there and say I'm a white woman because right. on my birth certificate right. it says black. But now, but and, and I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that. And and I don't, I, you know, and I'm not the the big racial guy. I try to make harmony wherever I go, but I am a quality guy. And um, I think that this other category, uh, and, and I'm just going to make it real plain. This other category could be white men with a lot of money that got businesses and can go in here and, 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 and get these contracts and just put other. And nothing will never be said or done. And, we, and it just comes up on the data. And nobody really asked the question because when you look, this whole disparity thing is about making things an even playing field. Okay, this is what it's all about, right? Am I, I mean, I'm right, right? Okay, so if we're going to make it an even playing field, then in my opinion, I'm not city council, uh, you know, I'm just a citizen with a business, a couple businesses here in Virginia Beach. If, we, if we're going to make that, if we're going to make this disparity study even, or even playing field, and, and we're off to a good start. I mean, I'm really happy about seeing what we're doing. But that other category has to be betterly defined than that, we, or just take it out. Just take it out. So I see our finance director in the back. I see you shaking your head. Would you like to comment on that or no? Okay. All right. We seem like you could add to that, but okay. <laughs> we just well, I mean, you know, is that something that we could consider doing or why I is mean, that? Why it's, is it's something that we could consider doing. But um, again, if you, you you remove that and you then you're you're forcing someone to identify as something they may be mixed race. So maybe okay. we change it to multicultural. I mean, would that suit you? I, I mean, look, it's not what suits me. It's what suits well, I'm just saying, would that look a little? Yeah, I think it would look, especially with me being an analytical type of person. Mm -hmm. I, and, and you remember, well, at the meeting, I brought this up. You know, and you know, we kind of went around the, the, the park with it, but. You know, I think it would be fair because anybody that's looking at this disparity study and we're looking down this thing, you see black, Hispanic, Native American, Asian, other minority, and you look at the numbers and how it was dispersed, that other guy, I might want to be that other guy because he's getting some money. Okay, he's getting some deals. All right, so that other guy, you know, is... You know, it, it's it's it, that looks kind of good to be a other. It looks better than being a Native American or an Asian, but that other guy looks good, just like Black Americans. So, I just think, in all fairness, and this is something that I just think, in, in, you know, this thing is a, a public thing. In all fairness, I think the other minority needs to either be identified in detail, or just taken out. Just my opinion. And I, and I certainly appreciate the feedback, and I know that we'll definitely consider that and maybe consider restructuring that. I don't know what the final outcome on that, but that's something that we can certainly discuss. But I think the ultimate um, check and balance for someone checking that box and they're not truly who they say they are comes when there is an audit and comes when, you know, research is done and people find out or auditors find out that you're not indeed who you say you are, and then the repercussion is, well, go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, it wouldn't behoove anyone to do that well, because you can get caught. Right, because yeah. that other is undefined. Yeah, but I see you know, what you're it saying. Wouldn't, it wouldn't make a difference, you know. I, yeah. I could go and get my... But I, get, I understand your point. Right. Point well taken. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good evening, everyone. Actually, um, thank you for having us. But I, you were actually right in the lane that I was going to speak, uh, Councilwoman Wooten, if you don't want to say Senator. Mm -hmm. um, there w it would be bared out at some point because they have to go through checks right. and balances. But however, right. speaking to what Mr. Neely was saying, um, before, like you said, I want to maybe expound on how the process is in reference to how it all will be uh, um, better. Because 
why do we have that category if it's just, you know, you can check it. And then at some point, somebody can uh, go and challenge it and say that you're not supposed to be in that other. But how, how is it maintained then? Um, and what is the, what is, who has been the other? Who is, who are they? I mean, why do we, because like you said, it's going to at some point, if you're not the other mm -hmm. category, you're going to be, it's going to be bared out. So I thank you for, that's what I was going to actually say. But then who, who is the uh, category that, that composes all of the, of that? Because I, obviously everybody that's checked it had to go through a process to now be, to be verified. Mm -hmm. To, to qualify for that other mm -hmm. number in that in that in that category, so maybe maybe expound on who is it that's actually in that category because you have that number. It has to be some people that you can identify that give an example. Thank you of who is in that category because, like Mr. Neely said, there could be people that do that under uh, auspice of a company that they create, and then you know. But anyway, so that's what I want to say. Right, and we can um, we can definitely pull that information from our system as to what businesses um, are defined in that category, um, and I mean that would give the business name, um, and we can definitely we can even look to see what contracts they hold as well. Yes, we could we could definitely do that. Any other questions? Or? Yeah, just a follow up. I mean, this okay. Is the first point. That I've talked about with regard to non-Hispanic white women, I think that's why getting back to this dashboard, you really have to tell the truth. And the truth of the matter is, is that when you look specifically at black American businesses, we're still not where we need to be. We're 50% of the goal. And every test I've ever taken in high school, college, if I got a 50 on the course, on the test, that was not an A, it was an F. So that's the message. When you lump everything together and include other and non-Hispanic white, it starts to look good. But we can't do that. That's what the disparity study did. It showed that there were significant disparities existing within certain areas. And that's the truth that we need to tell the public. Mm -hmm. And that's where we really need to really uh, double click and start doing things about it. Because it's great. Uh, you know. Asian Americans in Virginia Beach are eight percent of the population. Am I right? Am I right? Is that right? African Americans are what about nineteen percent? Am I right? That's right. Twenty-one, twenty-one percent. And look at those numbers. Something's wrong with this. Now that's population. It's not businesses. But the disparity study showed you, told us that there was a significant disparity. And so I, I guess all I'm trying to say is I, I heard the presentation and everybody was patting each other on the back about how well we're doing. I don't see it. I've run a billion dollar company and I don't see it. If somebody pr presented this to me, this data, I, I would not be happy. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Okay. And, and I certainly appreciate the feedback. And you know, in the very beginning of the presentation I mentioned, we're not where we want to be. Definitely not there to that goal. But we're so far past where we used to be. And when I remember looking at those numbers in the past, and even looking at the numbers from 2018 to 2019, I remember seeing a significant drop to where uh, minority uh, businesses were receiving 4%, and women-owned businesses were receiving 5.4%. 5, 5 and so the numbers for 2020 is a significant increase from that, uh, those numbers. And so, no, do we have a 100% touchdown kickoff no, but I do believe we're doing better than we were, and we're on a trajectory to even doing, it's, which is going up from what we see in the numbers. It's going up, 
and we have the potential to do better. So where we need to focus on some of those areas in the dashboard, and I want to thank the community because the community asked for the dashboard. And so I, in turn, asked the staff to work on uh, the dashboard, and I appreciate the work that you've done. Now what we have to do is go back and see how we can improve it because it's there for transparency and accountability. So we can improve that. Uh, and then we need to look at the other potential areas where we can improve and increase. Because from what I'm looking at, we could, in fact, you know, increase the goal that we have now at 12% for minority businesses. We can actually increase that goal because we know we're going up. Um, we can increase the goal for the women minority, uh, or excuse me, women owned businesses and service disabled businesses. We can increase those goals because we're going up. When are we gonna get there? How fast are we gonna get there? That's to be determined, but we know we're on that road. And so I hope that will bring some encouragement and hope for the future. But I will say this, Every step of the way will keep you informed, will take your suggestions and your feedback, will implement those, that feedback where we can and where there's pro progress. You will be the first to know. It's a question over here. Oh, <coughs> and there too. Oh, okay, here and then here. Okay. I appreciate what the... Uh young man out front stated earlier because obviously as a black man we have been a strong force within Virginia Beach but my question would be this knowing what we know and what has been done in times past what is the council going to do for the future as far as where those that desire to do business with the city is concerned well the first thing that we have done was to pass the resolution in February 2020 to implement all of those recommendations. So that was 2020. So now we're here in 2021. And so we're working to implement those recommendations. We haven't implemented all of them, but we're working to implement them. So that's the first thing we've done. We've acknowledged there's a disparity. Council has approved to implement all of those recommendations. And so here we are in 2021, sitting in one of those recommendations, which was a dedicated SWAM business office for small women, minority, service disabled business owners, right here where you come and you get the resources and the mentoring uh, and everything that you need. So this is, if you're interested in doing business with the city, this is your resource. Come here, see us, and the staff, uh, Mrs. Tolentino and others, will guide you through that process. This is what it's here for. So... Um, I was reading on your page three handout uh, when it talks about the business certification. And in all the SWIM classes I've been to, I've never heard about the certification. And on here it says um, attachment C. We were just simply told that Virginia Beach does not have a SWIM program, but I've never heard anything about this certification. So the, so with the business certification, sure, okay. sure. So um, with the business certification piece, um, that is one of the recommendations that we're still working on. Um, and as you can see the status and every, uh, the action taken and the status of that. So that's to be determined. Um, we do use the Commonwealth of Virginia um, Department of Small Business and Supplier Diversity. We use that certification, um, and they, they certify for free. It's at the state level. It offers the opportunities through, to, uh, it's, you know, statewide, so all the localities use that directory. 
Um, it's a public directory as well as it gives you, offer you an opportunity to see those solicitations that at the, the state level as well, as well as the locality level. So it's still in the works for the, the business certification program for the city. So it says here that it was approved and it says that it can be used as an alternative to the SWAM certification. So you're saying it's not in action yet? Good evening, Letitia Shelton, Finance Director for the City of Virginia Beach. When you see the attachments listed in the document that you have, they're actually referencing the ordinance, ordinance that were approved by City Council. That's not attached to the document that you have. Okay, so how do I get that? Um, we can get your information, I can get okay. it to you. Thank you. Thank you for the wonderful presentation. Um, I was able to attend the last large presentation that we had. And um, I'm just curious about if there's any conversation that can be shared about unbundling large contracts, because small businesses have a really hard time approaching government contracts that are so large and they have a small workforce. I don't know if there's been any conversation about it. Uh, in the report, it says it's ongoing, so thank you. He knew it. How we're doing it. Oh, oh, Rebecca. Um, purchasing agent, Ms. Rebecca Key, would you like to speak to that, please? Hi, I'm Rebecca Key. I'm the purchasing agent for the city of Virginia Beach. So the reason it says ongoing is because that's never a goal we're going to reach, right? We need to look at every contract and say, how can we um, make this more um, desirable, more competitive for SWAM businesses? Are we doing things that are putting up barriers that we don't recognize? And one of those things is bundling contracts into these large contracts that kind of pull out all the smaller businesses and, and, and give a disadvantage to those businesses that maybe couldn't bite off the whole, whole piece of that. Um, and that benefits our economy in general in Hampton Roads, right? Because we get more competition, it benefits the city because we get more competition. So we do look at contracts and look at those strategically and say, can we unbundle those? Does it make sense? Um, areas in which we do that, we were seeing, um, for example, our landscaping services across the city. We were bundling those up into one big thing and trying to hire one big company to do the landscaping. Um, and we said, gosh, there are a lot of companies around who could help us with that. And we get the same prime and he's subbing to all these, all these other folks. He's not even doing it all, but he's managing it all. And then the, the other businesses aren't getting an opportunity to be a prime, right? They never get that experience. And then we cut them out every time, right? Because they're not the prime. So we break that apart now. And we say we're going to bid this grouping of, of landscape. And so we may not bid it as each individual piece, but we keep breaking it apart until we start seeing those that were subs become primes. And we are having wins in those areas, um, but it's across the board because we do look at them all. But yes, we are doing that, absolutely. Rebecca Key on the purchasing. Okay. And, and I'll just say, say this, uh, Rebecca Key is the person to see if you have an interest in a contract or a field that you like to get you know, get into or, or ask questions about. She's the person who can help guide you through that. And even if you bid on a project, you don't get it. She can help you with a debriefing meeting to tell you what happened, why you didn't get it, and how you can improve going forward. So she's a valuable resource um, that you can use in the purchasing department. Yeah, I don't want to reiterate what Sabrina just said. Rebecca is an awesome resource. She's helped me out tremendously in the, in the uh, area of contracting. Uh, but I would say this, going back to the other category, that's kind of like my baby. Um, what we could do with the dashboard and in, in making adjustments with the dashboard is put in that dashboard what that other category is, what kind of contracts are awarded to that, that category and to the, and to the uh, minority category. So when people, new business people, like you said, this is kind of like an incubator here, right? Okay, so new business people that come on board, get their SWAM certification, everything like that, they can, we could pick people out of those companies that could come in 
and teach them how to enhance their business so they can successfully go after a lot of these contracts. I don't think it's a, 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 a big, I wouldn't say color issue. I just think it's that when people go into business, they just don't have what it really takes to accomplish those goals, okay? But what would help is, because I do a thing and I'm in the security world, and what we, what we do is we, we have mentors, okay, that actually help new guys start a security business, okay? They help them, show them how to start, how to go after the contract, the whole nine yards. And I think that's what we could do in, in, in our space, in the city space. We could do the exact same thing. So when you see that other, Somebody says, oh, he got a contract doing IT work for the city. Well, I just started my IT business, so I don't know all of the players. But guess what? We're going to show you who all the players are. We're going to show you how to grip and grin. We're going to show you how, and grip and grin is a way of networking. Okay, by the way, we use that in the government world. Um, so we're going to show you how to do all that. We're going to introduce you to the Rebecca's and to the city manager and to the finance manager and to all the players because we also have to teach our folks how to network. Network is very, very important. You have to get to know people. You've got to build relationships, okay? And, and I'm, I'm gonna go back to this. I'm gonna be honest with you. In the government contracting space, most of your contracting officers are black. See how quiet everybody is? You see how quiet it is? What, what this means, what this means, Okay, watch this. No, no, well, I'm sorry. Most of our contracting officers, what it means is that in the, now I'm talking government, I'm talking federal government. No, what, I'm, what I'm saying is it's, it's just we, we're in the right places. Now what we have to do, we just have to train our folks how to go after that and have the proper ways to get these contracts. We're in the right places. We're there. We're, we're in the right places. Now we just have to, with the disparity, we have to train our, our, our young people especially how to put together the business and then begin, to, and, and you know what another big thing is too? Is, oh God, I God, can't stand these masks. Uh, another big thing too is writing proposals. Proposal writing, proposal writing. I think I'm gonna put together a course myself on proposal writing because when I came in this world, I, I was lost. Thank you to you, Sabrina, about all of the set asides. I know nothing about set asides until you came in office. But when it came to proposal writing, I was lost. So it took me about a good year and a half to really get to know how to write proposals and all the different types of proposals there are. Okay, so that's another thing we could teach minority businesses is how to write the proposals. Okay, so there's a process to this. And I think once we get involved in the process and really teaching these new businesses, we're going to see a change in those numbers. So I, I think I, I'll say this, um, the information about the other category definitely will take that information back as feedback. The other part of it is you hit a very key element, and I was discussing this with someone the other day. If you don't have the businesses who are minority built up, trained, and ready to engage in that category of getting contracts, you will continue to see low, a, a low percentage and low numbers. But if we can, well, that's only part of it. That's not all of the reason why we don't see the, that high increase in number. But it is part of it because I see it. And that's one of the reasons why um, I do the Ignite Business Series. Now, I did an Ignite Business Series boot camp. And in that boot camp, I think I had five to 10 people. That was a key boot camp. You were introduced to the purchasing agent, or excuse me, director. She gave a stellar presentation. She told you the ins and outs of everything. That's key knowledge that businesses need to have to be engaged and prepared to participate in the process. So there is a responsibility uh, on uh, businesses to make sure they have the information. And it's free. And it's available. And if you need help, 
We're here to help you. But not only that, I know there are uh, mentoring programs. It's, it's, I know there is a one mentoring program I learned about from the Minority Business Council, and maybe you can talk more about it. But there is a program where you may have a more seasoned company will take another uh, less seasoned company under their wing and mentor them and help them to the process. But again, it's getting that information, getting that knowledge. Who do you go to? Who do you see? And so you, it's not that it, the opportunity is not there and the information is not there. It's getting access, awareness. And I like to think a big part of what I do with the Ignite Business Series is to bring education and awareness. Um, there are a lot of programs that the city of Virginia Beach, they do all the time very key information education goes out but i don't see a lot of engagement there all of the time and i don't know if that's awareness um, but i can do certainly a better job of getting that information out happy to do that but is there isn't there a program that helps yeah. but it's uh, it depends on the industry sector so um, there are quite a few construction firms, um, if you're in the construction arena, that have a mentor-protege program. Um, there are some companies um, that offer that, uh, you know, anyway. Um, we have one, and I can speak to, that was very successful. And um, it was a, a, a subcontractor, um, Refresh Cleaning. Um, they were a subcontractor on a large janitorial contract. Um, and they kept being a sub until, and this was within city contracting, I can only speak to that, um, but they are now a prime and they are doing very well in the space. And, and uh, to your point, Mr. Neely, that now that they are a prime, they are also mentoring other smaller companies um, to help them along the way to show them what they did. Um, so there are quite a few, and when we come across those, we, we do try to connect our small businesses um, with those mentors, if we know of a program. Yeah. So. Thank you. Thank you for that information. And I just before, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. McCullum, before your next question, just want to reiterate um, we want to make sure that we keep in line with the program. And so we'll take a probably a couple more questions before we kind of uh, close the program. Right. So uh, I, I won't disagree with anything that's been said, but I want to give you another perspective. Uh, I'm the former rector of Norfolk State University. I've had conversations with several predominantly white colleges around the Commonwealth of Virginia, and they complain that they can't find qualified minority contractors. And I said, well, why is it that Norfolk State can? So I, I hear everything that's been said, that they need to be qualified, we need to be better trained, we need to understand the processes. But let's be clear, there are minority businesses that know what they're doing, they have the wherewithal, they have the skills, but the door is not open in Virginia Beach. And I just want to be clear, and that's what the disparity study said. So I want to, again, let's go back to the disparity study and let's read it. I'm reading it right now, all 499 pages of it. They have the recommendations in here on what needs to be done to open the doors to contracting to minority contractors in Virginia Beach. And until that's done, until that welcome sign is up, you're not gonna get, it's not a skill set issue. If, if, if there were no minority businesses doing business anywhere in the Commonwealth, I would agree with you. But that's not the case. Why is it that you can go down to the Norfolk State, Portsmouth, and uh, yeah, Richmond. Why can you do that? But you can't do it here. So guys, let's, let's be real about this. We got work to do, but you got to do the right thing. You have to do the right thing. And we're here, Councilman Wooden, I applaud you for yeah. keeping this out there. You're doing a phenomenal <laughs> job. You are. But I, I can't leave this meeting without being very clear that I'm not happy with where we are right now. And I think there are a number of people who are not happy where we are right now. There's more we can be doing. The disparity study showed exactly what the problem was and gave us recommendations on what we can do to put a welcome sign 
for people who don't typically do business in, in Virginia Beach. And, and, and again, it's not necessarily a black and white thing. Let me tell you what it is. It's I've always done it this way thing. It's the same old, same old. The same old, same old get the contracts. That's what happens. It's the same people. That's what's going on. And until you change that, and I know people are going to be upset about that because they think that it's a zero-sum game, and if you give it to this you know, African-American female business owner, then it's not going to come to me. But it's not a zero-sum game. You need to make sure that everybody is participating in this because this is all of our tax dollars. So I just I had to jump in there. This is not all about black businesses need to go get their act together and learn and go to school. It's some of that, but most of it, it's not that. Thank you. And, and I, and as you take that next couple questions, two more, um, and I would say, echo exactly what you said, that's not all that I see. Some of it, but that's not all of it. And I think here today, and with these disparity forums and the work that's being done, because it's a work in progress, um, we want to change that perception. Because I've heard that perception. I hear it often that B Virginia Beach needs to be more accessible and more open. And so I hope that today in these disparity studies, or excuse me, forums, in conversations like this, that the perception will begin to grow uh, and be realized that that's not what we want to be. That's what we were, people say we were before, but the goal is and the perspective and perception we want to continue to create is that we are open for business for everyone. And that's why City Council implemented all of these recommendations and made it a priority in their budget. Before then, there was no budget for the disparity study recommendations. There was no budget for this facility. But when it was made a priority, the funding came for this facility. The funding will continue to come for the other recommendations. And as we keep the priority focus on the disparity recommendations, we'll begin to see that uh, new perception realize which it is. We're open for business for everyone. We don't want to exclude anyone. Tonight is an example of that. We don't want to exclude anyone. We're not here to, to say that, you know, or beat people down and say you're not educated to be. We're, we're not saying any of that. I hope that you can see tonight we're saying we want you're in the process. We want to make sure you're engaged with us as every step of the way, and we're going in a new direction, and that's forward, and that's up with those numbers, and our arms are open, and we welcome everyone. So we have one or what, anybody else have any questions? Okay. Thank you so much You're welcome. Thank you. for your help. Uh, I want to say thank you to everyone, the staff here at the Hive. Thank you to Lavera Tolentino and Rebecca Key and uh, to our finance direct director, Ms. Shelton. Uh, thank you to everyone who came to participate, even our um, IT who's running our camera here. Thank you so much. Thank you to everyone, uh, every person in this room. I appreciate it. Appreciate the, the hard questions. Appreciate the feedback. Because we wouldn't be where we are today without it. I can tell you that. We wouldn't be where we are today without the marches that took place, without the continuous advocacy. So we welcome your challenging questions and feedback. Um, and if we don't have an answer for you, we'll get one. If there's a process we can do better, we'll work on it because we want you to know that we welcome everybody for business. And it's always going to be um, 
my priority to make sure that everybody knows that and they believe that. So thank you for coming out tonight. I wish you a good evening. <laughs>